basket. And as we've said all year, some of those guys got to knock them down. Northwestern still with the 73% shooting mark from the field. That pass went over the head of Lasicki and taken away by Northwestern. Levon yeah. Johnson will work it up. The defense reacted to Peaks. Garrett was trying to hit the counter, and it wasn't there. Julian Bonner had a wide open three, and he missed it. Penn State right back down. Jarrett Stevens. Jarrett Stevens. Quick comeback after the missed three by Northwestern, and it's a six point game, 27 21. Bonner with Bailey on him. Straight up, straight up. Joe Grant. Boy, they always look inside for Eschmeyer. Yeah. Pulls up, draws the iron. Great Good rebound. offensive board by Ammons. Bonner will take it in. No call, and they lose the ball. No ball, nowhere to go. Yeah. Should have kicked it back out. Well, Penn State has withstood the early barrage from Northwestern, and now they can draw within four points with a basket here. Carl Jackson at the foul line, nowhere to go. Yeah, there's another mismatch inside there, Bruce. Julian Bonner is covering Garrett Stevens yep. now. Yep, they got to get the ball down low. There he is, wide open. Lasicki for the three, right at the shot clock buzzer. Offensive board and a bucket for Metzger. Jeremy Metzger has put Penn State within four of Northwestern now. 27 to 23. Got to keep going inside. Yes, Johnson found himself open on the baseline for the easy basket. And the Wildcats finally get a field goal. Seven points. Both teams need to work the ball. If Pete Lasicki gets a shot, he's got to take it. But both teams need to work the ball to see if they can penetrate the defense. They've got to probe the defense for a couple passes, see what they can get, especially in Northwestern with Devin Eshmar in the game. Lasicki had the shot, and he took it there. Running one-hander on the baseline. Here's the pass into Eshmeyer, posting up, but he passes out of it. Bonner for the three, won't go, and the rebound, Metzger. That's what's killing Northwestern. That's a wide open shot, and the defense collapsed on that fire. Ryan Bailey to the hoop for the Nittany Lions. Good move. Two point lead for Northwestern now, 29 to 27. At one point in this game, they led 23 to 7. Well, you can see they've lost their confidence, they've lost momentum, as we talked about earlier. When that happens, it's really tough to get it back, especially if your team is struggling to begin with. Bounds, we've got a foul called inside. And Jeremy Metzger will be hit with that personal foul. That was a nice, strong move by Joe Branch. He's a good athlete. He's really only 6'4". He's playing in there with the big guys all the time. He's a forward at 6'4". Shows what kind of athlete he is. David Macklin back into the game for Penn State. And Ryan Bailey will get a breather as he heads over to the bench. And there's Joe Branch. Has been productive for Northwestern. You saw the numbers there. Double figure scoring three of the last five. And he will try again after missing the first foul shot. Rolls it in. And the Wildcats hit the 30 point mark. Into the game, Sean Hanlon. And Branch will go over to the bench. But we've got a break in the action here, but the Lions are back into this game, just three points down to the Wildcats. We'll return in a moment. Everyone. Some do's and don'ts you should know about truck performance. Which truck has the most powerful standard engine? Toyota Tacoma 4x4s do. They don't. Which truck outhauls and outtows the others? Tacoma 4x4s do. They don't.
Which truck has the lowest projected repair costs? Toyota. And whose truck is rated best in initial quality? Toyota. All of which makes now a good time for you to do something. Toyota Trucks, simply the best. Penn State has narrowed the lead to three points here in Evanston, Illinois, and Pete Lasicki doing it inside, doing it outside. Look at this one, Bruce. Now well, Pete turns the corner on Joe Branch. He thinks he's going to get help. Pete decides to take a little running hook. A dozen points in the game for Pete Lasicki. Only one three-pointer thus far. I don't think Joe Branch thought Pete would put the ball down on the floor. That was a nice move, wasn't it? It was. There we go. Those numbers are getting closer. You knew that Northwestern would not continue with a 73% shooting pace, and Penn State would heat up a bit. That's exactly what happened. Pass forced inside to Lasicki as it torn out of there, but Penn State maintains control of the ball. Metzger down to Jarrett Stevens. Strong move inside. Yes. Good pass by Jaron Metzger. Good finish by Jarrett Stevens. And it's a one-point spread now. Penn State has clawed back into this game after being down by 16. You know, it's, it's amazing the success that Northwestern had getting the ball to Eschmeyer early. And that time he was wide open with the ball to the top of the key and they didn't even look for him. Evans outside with Carl Jackson guarding him. Cross court pass over to Hanley. He has to pull up with five on the shot clock and Macklin with a rebound. Well, they got nothing out of that set. Good solid defense. David Macklin streaks right down the lane, but we've got a travel call. Eshbaugh inside. Let's see what he's doing, Bruce. There, he's got good position. They're just not looking for him. He was wide open in there. He may be getting a little tired, too. So look at him. Well, I don't know. You know, he, he got some minutes on the bench right after he had that good flurry early, so he should be okay. I've seen him a couple times open. Well, they just, they had the ball in good position to get it to him, and the, and the offensive player just didn't look for him. Hamaday goes in deep. There they got it to him, and he drew the foul going up. But even there, they got it to him out of desperation. Hamaday had nowhere to go. He drives baseline, pulls up, and has to pass uh, dump off to Eschmeyer. Out of, out of desperation, really. See, here he's caught. Nowhere to go. He was out of bounds. Yeah, he sure was, wasn't he? This is Nate Pomaday's foot was out of bounds as he passed that ball. Eschmeyer on the line. Misses a free throw. <laughs> you just saw Ricky Birdsong over on the bench. Just closed his eyes at the missed free throw. Uh, He's a great guy. He's a funny guy. He's really a, a character. Esmeyer hits the second one. And it's a two-point lead for the Wildcats of Northwestern now. 13 points in the game for Evan Esmeyer. Pete Lasicki off the screen will take the three. In and out. Jared Stevens offensive four. Nice job. Northwestern does not cope with screens real well. Look for Pete Lasicki to be getting some more looks. And we are smack dead even tied at 31. Less than two minutes remain in the first half of the game. Hamaday tripped going into the lane. Boy, that's a bad shot by Javon Johnson. Real bad partially shot. deflected. Real bad shot. Oh, look out, JD, you're gonna get a T. Gary Dunn all over the officials there. His watch fell off. It's on the court. And here's what he's upset about. Yeah, I don't blame him. That was a good defensive play. Foul called on Penn State. Jerry Dunn upset with that call. It's frustrating, you know, you're trying to break a losing streak and your team's playing pretty hard and make a good defensive stop and then 
The other team's going to the foul line. That's that's rough. Life yeah. on that seat, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> A little different. And the technical for Jerry Dunn will send. All right. Sometimes you got to get their attention. Yeah. Evan Eschmeyer on the line for Northwestern. And there's. Boy, I, uh, he's not shooting the tees, I guarantee you that. Yeah, yeah. Eschmeyer was fouled. And then the argument about that by Jerry Dunn resulted in the technical foul. So now Javon Johnson will go to shoot the technicals. Halftime score, Vanderbilt hanging in there with number three, Kentucky. Six-point spread. Kansas State off to a, an early start there. And Texas for the lead on Oklahoma in the first half of the game. Javon Johnson hits the first technical to give Northwestern a two-point lead, 33-31. Javon Johnson hits again as Jerry Dunn looks on. A little calmer now. Jason the sideline. Let's see if Northwestern pounds it inside here. They're playing big right now. They, they've got Harmson and Eschmeyer in the game. Two big fellows in there. Let's see if they get it down low. Ryan Bailey on Javon Johnson. Sean Hannon. Garrett Stevens on him. Holiday for the three. No go, rebound Jeremy Metzger. Good strong board by Jeremy. And here comes Penn State with a minute 10 left in the first half of the game. They trail by three, 34-31. Metzger pops out. Both big guys out top now. But you look underneath again, and there is still that mismatch. Jared Stevens, Hamaday is on him. <laughs> but that'll, that'll solve a lot of problems I'll, right there. I'll tell you what. Sean Hanlon goes around the screen instead of just following Pete Lisicki, and, and if he does that, Pete Lisicki's going to have 30 points tonight. That's, that's really poor defense. 15 for Lisicki in the first half of this game, and we're tied at 34. We've got a foul call on Carl Jackson there. Yeah, Carl was a little aggressive. He made a good hedge move, but uh, got a little bit too aggressive with his hands. 33 seconds left in the half. And Javon Johnson will go to the line. One of their better free throw shooters at 78%. They're going to do a little mop-up duty down there before they give the ball. There's Carl Jackson, the freshman out of Columbia, Maryland. But three quick fouls in the first half of the game. And with Penn State already depleted at that forward position, you can't have a guy in, in foul trouble. Well, fortunately for Penn State, that's the one position where they have the flexibility to run in some different guys. Jared Stevens, Carl Jackson, Jeremy Metzger can play the four. So they do have flexibility at the, at the four spot. Javon Johnson can both foul shots with 33 seconds left in the half. It's a two-point lead. For Northwestern, 36-34, but Penn State with the ball. This will be the final possession. They can run it right down to zero if they choose. Shot clock not a factor. Metzger and Carl Jackson both out high. The line's on offense. Bounce pass inside. Metzger with a layup. Nice pass by Carl Jackson. Three, two. Javon Johnson pulls up and the shot. Oh, there's a foul. Ryan Bailey is going to be called with a foul in the three-point zone, zone. So Javon Johnson will go to the line to shoot three. Yeah, it looked like a foul. I'd like to see a replay on that. Let's take a look at this uh, one. You don't want to foul the jump shooter, especially in this situation. Yeah, he fouled him after he yeah. got that ball in the shooting position. Ryan Bailey with a foul right at the closing second of the first half. And Javon Johnson will take three from the line here. Well, that's tough. Penn State did a real nice job running the clock down, executing well. Got a good shot, converted, and getting three foul shots. Two for two for Javon Johnson, and he'll try for three. He's got 13 points in the game. 
three out of three for Javon Johnson, and that's how the first half will end. Pete Lasicki says, oh, no, what did we just do? After Penn State had tied it up, Ryan Bailey fouls on a three-point shot, and it's a three-point lead for the Wildcats of Northwestern as we go into the half here in Evanston, Illinois. We'll be right back. Crash the boards on Fox Sports Pittsburgh. Western Wildcats, but quite a comeback by the Nittany Lions. Let's look around the Big Ten for a moment now. There is our Big Ten Player of the Week, Kevin Turner of the University of Illinois. And look at those some of those numbers, 24 points in that game. Leading scorers around the league, Pete Lasicki standing there at number three. Andre Woolridge continuing his hot pace, almost 20 per game. As far as rebounders go in the Big Ten, Ryan Bowen is also continuing his hot pace, almost Double figures in rebounds at 9.9 per game. And, of course, we look at block shots. Calvin Booth, Bruce, way ahead of everybody there. Yeah, he, he is. He's one of the best shot blockers in the country. All right. Brad Miller, uh, the second shot blocker there. And your league standings, the log jam continues. Log jam, especially in the middle of the pack. The game tonight, both teams trying to keep out of that cellar. All right. Penn State Northwestern each going for their first win of the Big Ten Conference season. And the second half coming up in just moments. Halftime continues. We'll be back. Boat accident, Ninth Street Bridge. Okay, we'll get Late breaking there. news happens in an instant. This needs to be our lead. Tell the anchors. To... What is the latest information? When right it now? does, Remember Channel 11 News right. tracks down the details. Ten minutes. What did you see? We have two eyewitnesses down here. How many were on the boat? I'm checking. I'm checking. And brings them to you live. Kids were Ten seconds to live shot. Our live Team 11 coverage of this dramatic rescue. Just minutes Live, ago. local, late-breaking news tonight on Channel 11 News. More news, more often. It's their turf. It's their world. It's their game. And when we don't play by their rules, the results can be deadly. From the creator of the award-winning television series Wild America comes a home video unlike anything you've ever seen. These are nature's dangerous encounters, captured in one of the most astonishing wildlife films ever made and available now for the first time as a special one-hour home video. Call this toll-free number now to get Dangerous Encounters for just $19.95. It is not available in stores. Order now, and you'll also receive Watching Wildlife absolutely free. That's right. Both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $19.95. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-345-9500. That's 1-800-345-9500. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. From the number one dance label in North America ready for this? comes the new blockbuster, Dance Hits 96 Superman. It's a beautiful, 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 beautiful. 70 minutes of non-stop party dance. Do, Featuring smash hit songs by the original artist. And the biggest dance sensation to hit America since the twist. Hey, Dance Hits 96 Super Mix, Smash Hit Songs by Fun Fact, Entrance, Expose, Mighty Duff Cat, and many more. Available for the first time ever on one CD or cassette. Super Dance Hits by Nikki Brent, Corona, Ace of Bay, Artie the One Man Party, and Real McCoy. Super Dance Hits 96 Super Mix is a must for your collection. Dance It's 96 Super Mix is only $12.98 for cassette, $17.98 for CD. Call now. The only way you're going to cure cancer, AIDS, and most other diseases is understanding them at a molecular level. We're all working on pieces of the puzzle, not only here at Penn State, but researchers all over the world. It's really a feeling of like, I'm doing something important. When you think about the big picture, it's all about helping people. And that's really what I want to do. At Penn State's Hershey Medical Center, the search for new knowledge never ends. For a group of young explorers, the journey is just beginning. John Daniels. 
Today, John and his classmates at Lincoln Elementary have a job to do. They'll attempt to unravel the mysteries of DNA. How many people would now like to see some DNA? All right, wonderful. We're going to put some gloves on. Okay, now take that glass stirring rod and stick it inside and slowly twirl. Grand experiments like this one are now routine for over 6,000 children in Harrisburg Public Schools. You guys have DNA. Would you like to touch it? Yeah. These sophisticated lab settings are the result of a partnership between Penn State's College of Medicine and the Harrisburg School District. It's revolutionizing the way kids are learning science because children have the opportunity to come into a lab situation. They have an opportunity to engage in experiments uh, that they, with equipment uh, that they would not have in their classrooms. The aim, to turn kids on to science while youthful curiosity is at its peak. It's amazing. You get to um, touch stuff that's different and that you never touched before. Something that's so small you can only see it with this has all, all of this DNA in there. Three feet of DNA in one cell. You get to um, wear these gloves, you get to um, play with this, you get to see through the microscope. You get to learn new things that you never learned before. Hershey Medical Center in the Harrisburg School District created a comprehensive science program for grades K through 6. Funding from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and the Whitaker Foundation is making this possible. We are hoping that uh, these science centers will have a profound effect on our young people. Uh, not only to develop an interest uh, in the sciences, but we want these young people to look at science as a career goal. I've seen um, second graders put a coat on like this and look at me and just say, I, of course, am going to be a doctor, with no doubt in his mind. No doubt in his mind. And that's why, you know, it's worth it. That's why I think we're there. John and his friends have some time to decide what they'll be when they grow up. If Hershey Medical Center gets its way, the next time these students look through a microscope, they'll see themselves as the pioneering doctors and researchers of tomorrow. We need to see that again. Northwestern University, a student body selected from the best and brightest in America and around the world. Northwestern University, a faculty dedicated to high quality teaching, scholarship, and research. Northwestern University, an educational experience preparing students for active and engaged lives. look bigger on TV. Watch as Consumer Reports fills this box with your free gifts and a big savings discount. First, the 1996 buying guide is free with your paid subscription. See the reliability records of today's most popular cars. Tips on buying a computer and which printers performed best. What makes one TV picture look sharper than another? Vital information on hundreds of brand name products. This book, How to Clean Practically Anything, is also free with your paid subscription. 
clean wood floors, upholstery, drains, your VCR, plus how to remove almost any stain. Both come with your risk-free trial subscription. Twelve issues, including the auto issue, packed with performance ratings, reliability records, and product recalls. Plus, this subscriber bonus, the 1997 buying guide when published. Total discount, 60% off the cover price. And if you're not satisfied, we'll refund your money in full. Two free books, the 1997 Buying Guide bonus, a 60% discount, and a 100% money-back guarantee. All for just $24. Consumer Reports, what you see is what you get. Call now. The ball, the Wildcats only 47% from the field now, and Penn State over 50%. It's going to be an exciting second half of this game as both of these teams still in the running for their first Big Ten Conference win. We'll be back in just a moment. Boat accident, Ninth Street Bridge. Okay, we'll get Late breaking there. news happens in an instant. This needs to be our lead. Tell the anchors. What is the latest information? When right it now? does, River Channel 11 News right. tracks down the details. Ten minutes. What did you see? We have two eyewitnesses down here. How many were on the boat? I'm checking. I'm checking. And brings them to you live. Kids were born from fans. Ten seconds to live shot. Our live Team 11 coverage of this dramatic rescue. Just minutes Live, ago. local, late breaking news tonight on Channel 11 News. More news, more often. What lower round draft pick just might stun the NBA by becoming his team's leading rebounder this year? The Sporting News knows. Do you? What hot goalie will dominate NHL offenses to power his team to a great season? The Sporting News knows. Do you? What surprising rookie sensation could send his team soaring into the Super Bowl? The Sporting News knows, and you can too, when you call now to claim your no-cost, four-issue Sporting News mini-subscription. Plus, reserve these great sports binoculars free. When it comes to the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, and the NHL, nobody keeps you in the know quite like the sporting news. What GM's blockbuster trades will turn his pretenders into pennant contenders next season? The sporting news knows, and now you will too. Call now for your no-cost four-issue sporting news mini-subscription. If you like it, get 24 more issues, 28 in all, for four easy payments of just $4.99. Plus, get these great binoculars free with your paid subscription. Call now. Super Bowl Countdown Week continues tonight on Fox Sports News. I'm Susie Culver. And I'm Alan Massengale. Tonight, live from New Orleans. We'll be joined by John Madden and Howie Long. Along with the Packers, Sean Jones. Fox Sports News after the game. Creative Sports bring you, brings you the best in the Big Ten. And this Saturday, the Creative Sports Big Ten regional doubleheader features Ohio State here at Northwestern at 1 Eastern, followed at 3.30 by Wisconsin at the University of Illinois. And boy, you can't tell what's going to happen from week to week around the Big Ten. Penn State, of course, with three home games coming up involving Michigan and Purdue and Indiana. Leading scores, Pete Lasicki, 15 points, but right away you'd think, well, five three-pointers. But no, he did a lot of that from inside. Yes, he did. He, he showed his versatility. He took advantage of some of the opportunities within the offense to score inside. And obviously, he got a couple of Jays outside. For Northwestern, Eschmeyer got off to a hot start, has 14 points here at the half. You know, if you look at the, that scoring, you, you think Northwestern has a pretty good lead because Johnson and Branch are complementing Eschmeyer. But in reality, Northwestern didn't score for the last, I think they had one basket in the last 12 or 13 minutes. Right. So we, we talked about their defense breaking down. Boy, their offense really broke down as well. And did Penn pi State picked it up. Yeah, did Penn State do anything differently I, defensively? You know, I think they picked up their intensity, but I, I noticed Northwestern getting away from what they were doing early. Some first half scores for you there. Texas A&M hanging with number one Kansas. And Illinois with a four point lead on Michigan State. There's Purdue with a slight lead on Wisconsin in the first half of the game. Everything is tight around the Big Ten this evening. There's Jeremy Metzger who logged a lot of minutes in the first half of the game. And uh, with six points in the game as well including one 12 foot jumper at a critical stage in that Penn State run. Metzger the senior from Erie Pennsylvania and one of the fans on hand. Hello there at the Welsh Ryan Arena. Eagle. Hey, hey, John. Second half. Getting it away. Penn State has possession. Greg Stevenson with the ball. Brought by Lasicki. 
The counter was wide open that time. Jeremy Metzger's defender lunged out to help out on Pete Lasicki's cut, and Jeremy slipped the screen and was wide open in the middle of the paint. See if Penn State goes back to that look. Foul is called inside. Evan Eschmeyer called with that foul. And he stayed out of foul trouble in the first half of the game. He has had some problems with that. Mike Stevenson to throw it in for Penn State. GG, GG. And Ryan Bailey will back it out and set it, set it up again. Shot clock is down to 25 seconds. Now Penn State runs the offense. Take it in as well for the short jumper. Good patience that time. Good ball movement. And Ryan Bailey could have launched a three. It was yeah. wide open out there, but settled for the shorter jumper and yeah. probably a good decision. It was. They, they, they had several good decisions that possession. A couple guys could have taken shots and forced it, and they didn't. Joe Branch with the ball for Northwestern. Lob into Eschmeyer. He gets it to Ammons with a left hand. No go. Well, that's interesting. Booth. Ammons had Booth on him, and they go to Ammons to try to score inside. Ammons again with a left hand, and this time it goes after the scramble underneath. So the teams trade baskets early in the second half to lob the cow. And we have got a foul as well, and the bucket is good. Just going to say, I'd really like to see Penn State try to go at Eschmeyer and see if they can get him on the bench with a couple of fouls. Well, he picks up two quick fouls yeah, he gets here good in the second position. half. Holds off the defense, catches a lob. He got the foul before the shot. Yeah, he's going to get two shots. Galvin Booth on the line. And three point play, the game of basket. Yep. Get the bucket and a three point play completed by Calvin Booth. Tied at 41. Second half is just underway. Hammonds looks inside, trying to get it to Eschmeyer, but he wasn't there. Jeremy Metzger is really putting a body on him. In Jeremy can do that. Calvin can. Lob inside for Eschmeyer, tipped away by Booth. Here come the Lions the other way. Bailey, a spin in the lane. No right. bucket, no basket. We have got an offensive foul. Well, Penn State can make a run right now. I don't, I don't think Northwestern's playing solid defense. They're out of sync offensively, and I think this is an opportune time for Penn State to take advantage of those defenders. Carvel Ammons had the position as Ryan Bailey went for the basket. Yeah, good call. There are a couple of freshmen taking part in this game, and some similar numbers, too, for Carvel Ammons and Ryan Bailey. Feed it inside. Penn State collapses in and Ammons loses the ball. Ammons put the ball down on the floor with no purpose. He wasn't trying to beat his man, he just caught it and put it down. He was sick. He altered that shot in midair and it doesn't go. Penn State's doing a good job of clogging up the paint. Look at Calvin down there and getting ready to help out on Eschmeyer. Northwestern just doesn't have anybody else who can be a threat from the perimeter to make Penn State come out and play. Now Calvin Booth drew the foul there. Didn't need to foul. That's, that's a bad foul because Eschmeyer yeah. was pulling away from the basket. He was in trouble. Don't need to bail him out in that situation. Booth went over to help out on Eschmeyer. Here is Ammons with a three-point launch. No good. And Stevenson with a rebound. We'll let him take those shots up for a while. Still tied at 41. 17 minutes remain in the game. Bounce pass into Metzger. There's a mismatch. Turnaround jumper won't go, though. Metzger kept it alive. Bailey to the hoop again. This nice time try. he gets it. Penn State might have gotten away with one that time. Looked like Calvin might have come, in, might have come over the back of the defensive rebounder, but Penn State cashes in on that opportunity. And Penn State has their first lead since they led this game early on with a first basket. If I'm Kevin Booth, I just stay in that paint and make Ammon shoot that jump shot if he wants to. 
Julian Bonner couldn't hit it either. Back down the other way. Lasicki in the lane. Pass down to Jeremy Metzger. Gets his own rebound, but tipped away by Ashmeyer. And the Wildcats bring it the other way. Joe Branch lobbed down inside for Ammons with Booth on him. Calvin Booth blocked the pass. It's interesting they're going to Ammons. Yeah. I guess they're trying to get Calvin Booth in foul trouble, but Ammons isn't taking it to him. Eight seconds on the shot clock now. Javon Johnson to the foul line. He will take it down and right what to the move. rack. What a great move. Just snuck through a seam and got right to the hoop untouched to retie the game at 43. Take the jumper, he hits that. Second jumper he's hit from just about that same spot. It's the same play they ran where Pete Lasicki got a couple of layups coming into the basket off the back screen. The defense helped out on Pete that time and left Jeremy Metzger wide open. Eight points in the game for Jeremy Metzger. And a two-point Penn State lead. Joe Branch, Fred Stevenson applying the defense there. The lob to Eschmeyer. Hook shot is blocked by Calvin Booth. Good defensive job. Plug up that paint, take off across and shoot the jump shot. And that was helped from the offside, too. Jeremy Metzger was applying the defense. Bailey to the hoop, it goes. Good penetration, nice individual move. And Penn State has opened up a four-point lead. Javon Johnson. Ammons will take it to the baseline, into Eschmeyer, in traffic, and he gets it to roll in. Yeah, that was still solid defense. They made him take a tough shot. I would just like to see Penn State plug, plug their defense inside even more. Not let him get his hands on the ball. Tipped away from Metzger. And Julian Bonner tipped it away, and uh, Jeremy Metzger is going to be called with a foul as he tried to get that ball back. And Jerry Dunn, again, <laughs> the obvious question, what are you doing? But it's a two-point lead, Penn State and Northwestern. from your everyday savings store. Shop for less, shop for less, yes! He's America's greatest daredevil. This is great! The unquestioned superstar entertainer of our day. The one, the only, Super Dave Osborne. It's our best of Super Dave show. This collector's edition, Best of Super Dave, is now available to you on home video. Okay, then I'll just go through the door and stop. Now you can enjoy the Super One's greatest hits again and again. Don't try this one until you get my video and look at it a few times. Keep head down, left arm straight, just wait. Don't kill yourself looking. You can't buy this tape in any store. They're so lazy, they're driving up. The Best of Super Dave on VHS is only $19.95. Call the number on your screen to order. Is this fantastic? Tonight's Big Ten Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. And it's a two-point lead for the Nittany Lions of Penn State as they come back from the timeout. Jerry Dunn, some words of wisdom. Ricky Birdsong trying to get his guys going again. He had a fire lit under them Go early kids. in this game, but they have slowed Go down work. considerably. Yeah, their weaknesses started uh, exposing themselves in the second part of the first half, and unfortunately for Ricky, that trend has continued here in the early part of the second half. 
Durant working on Stevenson, draws the foul. Stevenson fouling him on the way in. No shot. Joe Branch, the junior from Houston, Texas. Now they have a dilemma. If Eschmeyer is inside, which he, that's where you want him to try to score, it clogs up the middle a little bit, and Branch really can't take advantage of that driving ability. Taken away on the inbound pass by Ryan Bailey. And Penn State with a chance to expand the lead again. Joe Harmson is into the game for Northwestern. So he and Eschmeyer inside provide a lot of size. There's a tip and a takeaway Northwestern. Javon Johnson with the easy layup. Real good ball pressure that time by Julian Bonner. We're tied up again at 47. This one could go right to the wire. 13-10 remaining in the game. Jared Stevens. Armson popping out on him on defense. Carl Jackson, Edmire taking over there. Pete Lasicki, three-point area, stepped inside the three-point line and nailed it. Good pump fake, escape dribble, freed himself up for a wide open shot. Pete Lasicki with 17 points in the game. Have got a whistle inside. Jackson and Eschmeyer were battling in there. Carl Jackson's going to pick up his fourth person. Yeah, see, Carl, Carl didn't have to foul him there because Eschmeyer was sliding up the lane so far that Carl could have just slid behind him and let him catch the ball way up there. He would have been vulnerable for, for defensive help way up that far away from the basket. Really wouldn't have been much of a threat. David Macklin checks into the game for Penn State, applying the defense there. Joe Branch in the lane. Carl Jackson, a nice job to get a hand up. And here comes Macklin, back for the line. David Macklin streaking to the hoop, but it won't go. Good recovery that time by Northwestern. A little too far. Pete Lusicki can't control. And nice hustle by Greg Stevenson. Stevenson got back to knock it out of bounds. Joe Branch a little wobbly as he got up from the floor there. Let's check some of this action. Yeah, here's an ill-advised pass ahead. Branch tries to shuffle it to Big Joe, and uh, Greg Stevenson was Johnny on the spot, fortunately for the Nittany Lions. Dana Fritz checks into the game. There's Carl Jackson going over to the bench, and Pete Lasicki will also take a seat on the bench. Ricky Birdsong adjusting his lineup as well. And Sean Hanlon checks into the game. John Hanlon has really been struggling in Big Ten play. Was really promising in non-league play. Looked like a pretty solid shooter. He's a pretty bouncy player, pretty athletic. He's really been struggling lately. See how high Evan Eschmeyer is? Yeah. He's not a threat there. They just play behind him there. Set the screen. Good and help. the ball is now a foul on David Macklin. Oh, that's a tough break. Whoa. Real nice help that time. Macklin ran into a screen from Eschmeyer, then came back to seemingly tip the ball away. But yeah, it was a good recovery. Yep. There he runs off Evan's screen, comes back, recovers. Looks like he deflects it off of uh, Javon Johnson's foot. We've got a break in the action here in Evanston, Illinois. The Penn State Nittany Lions two-point lead on the Wildcats. We'll be back in a moment. I disagree. With the way he controls the puck, they have no business playing dump and chase. And I don't think anybody sees the rink better. But if they use him to kill penalties, will that take the edge off his offensive game? Oh, Betty, you're such a worrier. Can you make it look like this? All we can do is try. The Avalanche take on the Penguins Thursday at 7.30 on Fox Sports Pittsburgh. Hey, Denny Brower, show us your bait. I catch more fish with Bassmaster than anything else. Bassmaster keeps me up on the latest strategies and techniques for finding and catching more fish more often. Hey, Sean Grigsby, show us your bait. I wouldn't be caught fishing without Bassmaster Magazine. This is where over a half million members of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society share their secrets for success. It's what you know and where you go that counts on the water. As a member of Bass, I depend on the know-how I read in those 10 yearly issues of Bassmaster Magazine. But you have to be a member of Bass in order to get it. Hey, you're a member, aren't you? You're not? An angler like you ought to be a Bass member. Come on and join us and start packing this in your tackle box. 
Call 1-800-BASS-854 now to join Bass. With your $18 paid membership, you'll receive 10 issues a year of Bassmaster Magazine plus this free tackle pack with Berkeley's Glitter Power Worm, Pradco's Bomber Flat A, Berkeley's Trilene XL line, and a copy of Bass Baits. That's 1-800-BASS-854. There's your score. The Penn State Nittany Lions lead it by a basket with 11.51 remaining in the game. And checking out the battle of the point guards. Javon Johnson, 18 points. A lot of that coming from the foul line. It's like and the seniors winning that battle. Yeah. Ryan Bailey with three assists. And well, that was one of the ugly figures out of the Wisconsin game, too. Mm -hmm. The Penn State had only three assists for the entire game. 20 turnovers. Yep. Penn State has increased the shooting percentage for the first half. They picked it up after a slow start. And keeping it going here in the second half. Bonner passes in, Hetchmeyer double team. he still gets it though. Now boy, he was triple teamed that time, and there's no way a guy should be able to make a move out of a triple team. 18 points for Evan Eschmeyer. And he locks it back up again at 49 apiece. What a move. Dana Fritz had Bonner off his feet but couldn't get by. Garrett Stevens, double nice team. Pass. Uh oh, Greg Stevenson. I'm not sure if he lost control or had it knocked away. It will be Penn State ball, though. What a great pass out of the double team by Jared Stevens. Here it is. They're a good post up position. You see, he's triple team, but ducks under Jeremy and still gets a shot off. That's a heck of an individual move. Big fella can play. Yep. Penn State ball. Pete Lasicki back into the game now for the Lions. Greg Stevenson will throw it in. Bingo. Masicki open for the three. And that was actually just a two. Well, he gets two out of that, but that inbound play worked in perfection. Boy, just pack it down in there. There's the, there's the triple team again. Yep. Arm can shoot that shot. They don't want him shooting the ball. You want Sean Hanlon shooting the ball, but you can't give it back. Joe Harmson took the shot from distance, and then Eschmeyer just put it back in. Tied at 51. That's inside. Jarrett Stevens. Nice Foul and a bucket. It'll be a three-point attempt for Jarrett Stevens. That's what I like to see. Penn State. Pounding it in there and playing with force. Good post position. Jarrett makes a nice catch in traffic, turns and finishes strong. Eight points for Jarrett Stevens. He'll try to make it nine right now. As Jarrett Stevens, a sophomore from Ferndale, Michigan, getting his first career start, misses the foul shot, however. Two point Penn State lead, 10 20 remaining in the game. Penn State and Northwestern, each in search of their first Big Ten Conference win. Good defense by Penn State as Hanlon dumps it off to Eschmeyer. Good a shot to hold, though. Down to seven on the shot clock. Hanlon will put it up. Didn't catch any iron at all. And Jared Stevens with a rebound. Sicky inside, Jeremy Metzger fouled as he goes up. Well, I'll tell you, Northwestern has really fallen asleep with their weak side defense. Jeremy Metzger will go to the line. Here we go. Here, Northwestern, uh, you see Eschmeyer gets caught coming around from behind. Pete Lasicki makes a nice feed into Jeremy. Can't quite finish, but it was a good look. And in my opinion, Eschmeyer didn't need to be trying to fight around Jeremy Metzger. He should just play behind him. He's got a height advantage. Make Jeremy shoot over him. Jeremy Metzger on the line. Call the Nittany Lion. Yeah. Not quite. <laughs> Used all of it. Yeah, he did. And he'll give it another shot. Metzger with eight points in the game so far. And he makes it one out of two for his ninth point of the game. Three-point lead for the Lions now, 54-51. Julian 
Bonner gets it off to Holiday inside. Eschmeyer. Mm, that was a walk. Yeah. Well, he had a power layup and turned away from the defense and made a, an easy shot, a tough shot, and walked in the meantime. Yeah. Joe Harmson took a nice pass and couldn't convert. Here it is. Here, Eschmeyer makes a nice dump off pass to Joe. Joe pump fakes and skips up. He should have just taken it right to the rack. Penn State trying to expand on the lead now. They're up by three. Lasicki for a three. I'll tell you, they can get that shot all night. Oh, oh man. Northwestern is, a, is at least a step slow defending that play. 22 points for Pete Lasicki. Same total he had against Wisconsin, but we still have 8.58 remaining in this one. Homiday with a pass inside. Here's Harmson again. This time goes up with a hook, no go. Good rebound by Jarrett Steven. Yeah, we blocked that one. No, he didn't. No. <laughs> yeah, he did too. I think he got a piece of uh, Harmson's shot that time. Pete Lasicki drew the foul as he went around, and Harmson commits the foul. And personnel changes. There's Pete Lasicki. He's having quite a quite an evening. Carvel Adam Ammons back into the game. Joe Branch comes back into the game for Northwestern. And Javon Johnson also getting set to come back in. And Lasicki will throw the ball in for the Nittany Lions. Well, you can see Northwestern's struggling with their half-court defense. And they're really struggling in the half-court oh. area offensively. And Penn State converts another inbound play as Jarrett Stevens gets the easy layup for the Nittany Lions. And it is now an eight-point Penn State lead, 59-51. And Ricky Burnsong says, hey, we need a timeout to talk about this here. 20-second timeout for the Wildcats of Northwestern as they have fallen behind the Penn State Nittany Lions. Here's the inbounds play. There, it looks like Northwestern was in a zone. And this is the last two times this half. Penn State has just cut to an open area and gotten a wide open shot just by going to an open area against their uh, baseline defense. And Jarrett Stevens, 10 points in the game, so he is in double figures in his first start as a Nittany Lion. And there is Ricky Birdsong trying to recapture some of that spark that the Wildcats had early on in the game. Penn State has ripped off a 10-2 run in the last two and a half minutes of this one. I think Penn State's going to play a little matchup zone here. Stevens coming out on the matchup. Screen from Eschmeyer. Javon Johnson can't get it to go. How did Eschmeyer get back in there for the tip in? Well, he ran a screen and roll against his own that time and slid right down the lane and got good position. Six point lead for the Lions. Under eight minutes remaining in the game. Bills in for Bruce Park Hill here in Evanston, Illinois. All the Big Ten action. Lasicki takes it down low again. Metzger just inside the three line, and that one won't go. Oh, Joe Branch almost fell out of bounds in that rebound. Nate Pomaday way outside. Lasicki on him. And now Javon Johnson will rearrange the offense to get it going. Now Penn State's going to challenge Ammons to shoot a jump shot. See, Calvin Booth is laying off of him, looking to help out inside. That's, that's a good defensive move. Eschmeyer took it to the hoop. It was blocked by Calvin Booth, but he was fouled by Metzger before the block. So Evan Eschmeyer will go to the line. See, Calvin Booth is laying off his man, looking to help out when Eschmeyer gets the ball. And here's he, he's in good position to block the shot. Unfortunately, Jeremy Metzger bails Eschmeyer out on the drive. 22 points, nine rebounds for Evan Eschmeyer in the game. 23. Well, Eschmeyer having another outstanding game. Here's the look inside. Calvin Booth with only four shots in the game again. Seven points and three blocks. They would like, how many times would you like to see Calvin Booth shoot the ball? I, I'd like to see him shoot eight to ten times a game, Bill. All right, so Calvin Booth trying to get into the offense, but Penn State leads by four, and we'll be back.
Everyone loves to shoot the basketball, but there's only one right way. That's why former NBA All-Star and NCAA coach Jeff Mullins is introducing the right way basketball, the ball with a built-in coach. For the first time ever, you can own this complete 10-step shooting program. It includes a durable patented basketball, the Jeff Mullins Secrets of Shooting video, and a 10-step shooting poster, all for only $34.95. That's less than you'd pay for a one-hour private lesson. Why would any young player or coach be without a right way basketball? So why wait? Just call 1-800-425-0811 to order yours today. It's their turf. It's their world. It's their game. And when we don't play by their rules, the results can be deadly. From the creator of the award-winning television series Wild America comes a home video unlike anything you've ever seen. These are nature's dangerous encounters. Captured in one of the most astonishing wildlife films ever made and available now for the first time as a special one-hour home video. Call this toll-free number now to get Dangerous Encounters for just $19.95. It is not available in stores. Order now, and you'll also receive Watching Wildlife absolutely free. That's right. Both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $19.95. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-345-9500. That's 1-800-345-9500. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. Penn State up by four in this game here in Evanston. Big Ten basketball, and you know, you can go online with a Big Ten conference. Look at that. We're surfing the web right here along Press Row. Can you believe it? And you can get stats, information on your favorite team and the Big Ten. Homepage, right there it is on the World Wide Web at www.bigten.org. Now well, Penn State will have the ball on offense. Let's talk a little more about Calvin Booth, what they want to do to get him involved. Really. Well, Bill, I, I, you know, I said I'd like to see him shoot eight to ten times, and I would, but part of that comes with uh, Calvin has a responsibility to work, I think, a little bit harder than posting up. I think uh, he's lost a little bit of confidence, and as a result, has let his energy level go down a little bit. He can't afford to do that. I think he's got to earn some of those shots. But I really would like to see him touch the ball down in the paint more often so that he could try to get to the foul line. He hasn't shot that many foul shots this year. Yeah. And he's a good foul shooter, and he's a, a guy who can, I think, complement Pete Lasicki's outside play. Booth tried to throw a bounce pass inside. It was kicked by Evan Eschmeyer. A little bit of housekeeping, and we're ready to get it back going again. Jared Stevens to throw it in for Penn State. Penn State has only been to the foul line eight times in this game, compared to 23 trips to the foul line for Northwestern. Jeremy Metzger, good position inside. Jump hook, won't go. But he tips it out. <laughs> Pete thought about taking that one. Dalvin <laughs> Booth trying to find a seat inside. Boy, Northwestern just does not defend the screens well. Pete was wide open that time. In and out for Lasicki that time, however. And Northwestern with a chance to cut it to two. Six minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the game. Here at the Wells Ryan Arena. Ball tipped around over in the corner, and we've got a foul called on Pete Lasicki as he falls right into <laughs> falls right into the crowd. Actually fell into that Northwestern dance team and did not look like he was too much in a hurry to get out of there. <laughs> well, as long as he didn't kick a cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> See, Pete is enjoying hey. himself in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. On the line, Nate Pomaday for Northwestern. Watch out, watch out. There you go. Ah. All fires, but a nice offensive board after the miss. Javon Johnson will set it back up again. See if Northwestern pulls Ammons away from the basket. He's not a great outside shooter, but as long as he's down in there, Calvin's going to be able to guard him and help out with Eschmeyer. Boy, they're going right at him. Evans again. That's this one won't go, and it's out of bounds, and it's still going to be Northwestern ball. That's a tough assignment for Ammons to try to score over Calvin Booth. He's a good young player, and he's got some nice moves, but that's tough. But you know, when you don't have guys who can shoot the ball, you got to try something. And I agree with Ricky's philosophy of trying to pound it in if you can't shoot the Jay. What do we have here? Foul called on Ryan Bailey as Javon Johnson went into the lane. Watch the contact. There, 
Juwan Johnson puts his head down. Ryan isn't quite there. Yeah. Didn't quite establish himself. So Javon Johnson will go to the line now for Northwestern. So they are in the bonus situation. And this could make a difference down the stretch here. The other way. Oh. The way they've been going to the foul line, it sure could. Yeah. <laughs> Javon Johnson misses from the foul line. One of few foul line misses for Northwestern in this game. Mm -hmm. Javon Johnson's had a good ball game tonight. You know, we said going into the game, he's, he's a guy that needed to step up and yeah. get Northwestern to the scoring help. Joe Branch on the cover there. Garrett Stevens goes into the lane and he is fouled. Nice strong move. Good catch in traffic, good power move up to the basket. Nate Pomaday is called with the fouls. And Jarrett Stevens will go to the line. Pomaday goes over to the sideline now. Julian Bonner back into the game. There goes Pomaday. The sophomore from Cedar Grove, Wisconsin. And there goes Pete Lasicki over to take a seat on the bench. Jared Stevens, there's the free throw numbers we talked about earlier. Northwestern outstanding in this game from the foul line, and Jared Stevens misses. Boy. You know, yeah, Northwestern's been pounded inside to Ashmeyer, or they've been driving the basketball, and that's how they've been getting to the foul line. Penn State has been uh, not quite as aggressive going inside with the basketball. Nice game for Jared Stevens in his first start. And the Nittany Lion gets that one to roll home, and 11 points for Jarrett Stevens, and a five-point lead for the Nittany Lion with 5.15 remaining in the game. Julian Bonner out top for Northwestern. That's Meyer on the baseline. Javon Johnson, that one blocked by Calvin. That one was just waiting for that one. And a two-on-one for Penn State. Here's Greg Stevenson. He oh, 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 that looked like a pretty good block. Hope we can get a replay on that one. Joe Branch is called with a foul. We're going to try to get a peek at that one here as Greg Stevenson had it. Here's a block of well, the Calvin other Here's Calvin waiting, just laying back waiting for him. Kicks it out. Penn State gets a run out. Greg Stevenson on Yep, got him with the body. Good call. Greg Stevenson. Showing some hops. Yeah, yeah, he got up. Both guys showing some hops. Oh, there's the old behind the back maneuver at the foul line. Draws. Gets the crowd into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets the ball to drop. Greg Stevenson in his third start as a freshman at Penn State. Now she'll go there behind the back again. Job by the it's both, and the Nittany Lions expand the lead to seven points now. David Macklin checks back into the game. The ultra quick point guard. You now Penn State's got to take care of the ball, work the ball on offense, take good shots. Northwestern is struggling like crazy on offense, so Penn State just has to play solid defense and not give them second shots. And don't bail them out with fouls if they drive to the basket. Now they got Calvin on Eschmeyer. And here is the battle. Eschmeyer goes up and he's fouled. And Jeremy Metzger dropped back to help out. And they're going to get Jeremy with a foul. Well, I think I would switch Calvin off of Eschmeyer and let him back, you know, just lay back in there to block shots. Eschmeyer's got a physical advantage here. He gets pretty deep position so that when Jeremy, Jeremy gets there a little bit too Whoa. late. Didn't look like Jeremy did much. No, it sure didn't, did it? You'll have that on the road. And there is Calvin Booth, who has, by my count, five blocks in this game. Let's see if Jerry Dunn switches Calvin back off of Eschmeyer and lets Jeremy Metzger push with him a little bit because Jeremy can hang with him strength-wise. Eschmeyer, 26 points against Michigan State. He's got 24 in this game and nine rebounds. Here's David Macklin going over to the Penn State bench. Pretty good night for the big guy. 25 points at nine boards. Now we've got 431 remaining in the game. And it's a six point Penn State lead. Ricky Burns song. Over on the Northwestern bench. And 
Meyer hits both. He's had a good night at the foul yeah, line. I was just going to well. say, Big Phil's coming up big at the foul line, and he hasn't been shooting the ball well at all from the foul line. Metzger, his fourth personal there, and Greg Stevenson. We'll go over to the bench for Penn State. Now we get some full court pressure by Northwestern. I'm a little surprised that they've waited this long to do that. Calvin Booth to Ryan Bailey. Julian Bonner will apply the defense on him. Five point lead. Penn State going inside. Here's Calvin Booth. Takes the dribble. Short jumper. Yes. Nice Calvin Booth converts on the bucket. And Penn State is up by seven. Calvin's really been a factor this half. Primarily blocking shots and at the defensive end, but he's got a good touch down there on the offensive end. As we talked about before, it'd be nice to see him get it a little bit more often. There he's going to block a oh, shot. Oh, oh, man, did he blast that off the glass as Javon Johnson tried to go down the lane. Oh, just swatted that thing right off of there. Jared Stevens. Bonner covering him again. Now there is that size mismatch. Yep. Masicki. Elbowed away from He's Bill Brand. Be careful. Yeah. That's an offensive foul. Masicki on the screen. Takes the shot. Short. Javon Johnson. Long pass. Goes down to Ammons. Oh, don't want a foul. Good and a foul. Don't want a foul in that situation. Let him go. Carvel Ammons on the fast break. Fouled by Pete Lasicki, and he gets the bucket as well. He's got a shot at a three-point play here. Four fouls on Lasicki. Nice kick ahead by Javon Johnson to Carvel Ammons. He takes a strong and a terrific finish. Ammons to the line, 41% free throw shooter. You got to foul somebody. That is the guy. Nice rebound by Jared Stevens. Five point lead for Penn State, 3 10 remaining in the game. Ryan Bailey will take his time now. Shot clock is down to 15 seconds. Penn State should be able to get a good shot if they set good screens. Julian Bonner batted it away, and he's called with a foul. foul there and Ryan Bailey will go to the line in the bonus here just yeah, try to punch it out yeah letting him run the clock down and and then he fouls him after you let him run the clock down Ryan Bailey on the line for Penn State in the one and one misses the front end but right to Jared Stevens oh that's a killer for Northwest yeah Bonner is all over Bailey, fouls him again. And they will send Ryan, there's Julian Bonner, sophomore from Detroit. Pretty good breeding for that guy. You know whose dad played for? The Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Got to be a quality guy. Your team, huh, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got some good genes. You know, it's what a dilemma for Ricky Birdsong. Who's going to shoot the three for him? Yeah. They come down and they get behind. They need some three point shots down the stretch. Who's going to do it for him? Ryan Bailey hits the front end of the one and one this time to give Penn State a six point lead. And Jerry Dunn trying to put the wraps on his first win in the Big Ten for this season. Well, right now they're in a position where it's their game if they just play smart. Ryan Bailey hits both. And the Nittany Lions have the lead late in the game here in Evanston, Illinois, as they go for their first win in the conference. We'll be back in just a moment. It's time to score on Fox Sports Pittsburgh. It'll be a Big Ten bash when the Badgers battle Lon Kruger's fighting Illini. Fox Sports Pittsburgh, Wisconsin, Illinois, Saturday at 3. Okay, listen up. Here's how Foodland gets you set for the big game. 
We're on the 20 with Lay's potato chips, just 178 a bag. Then the handoff is to Coca-Cola, two liters, just 88 cents. On the reverse from the deli, get Pizza Bene, the new take-home ready-to-heat need pizza. And go long with a great selection of sandwich rings to feed your entire team. So that's how you score big at Foodland. Yes! Shop for less, shop for less, yes! Coors Light, the silver bullet. It's frost brew to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Hey, where'd you come from? It's the Hall of Fame, my man. You guys look bigger on TV. Crash the boards on Fox Sports Pittsburgh. Damon Stringer orchestrates the offense when the Buckeyes travel to Evanston to wrestle the Wildcats. Fox Sports Pittsburgh. Ohio State, Northwestern. Saturday at 1. Penn State with a seven-point lead. Look at that. Even here deep in Big Ten territory, we've got some support, huh? This Saturday, our Creative Sports Big Ten Regional Doubleheader features Ohio State here at Northwestern at 1 Eastern, followed at 3.30 by Wisconsin at the University of Illinois as the Big Ten wars continue. How about this, Bruce? Here, Javon Johnson's ringing up a layup, and up. The big fella. <laughs> Forgot one thing. Who is that guy? Look at that. Calvin Booth with 157 career blocks. That's an updated number for you. And he's got five or six in this game. Doing a good job back there protecting that basket. Look at Calvin Booth out on the defensive pressure there. Javon Johnson to Branch. Outside. High arc and oh. goes in for Javon Johnson. Boy, he lets that shot go from the hip. I was, about, yeah, I was gonna say right from his belt. <laughs> and Northwestern with a quick timeout after the three-point shot, and it's a four-point lead. Watch this where he lets his shot go from. Whoa. Boy, I'll tell you, you, Jerry Dunn's thinking, man, they don't shoot the ball. Why do you have to make that now? <laughs> Come on. Javon Johnson, just a 26% three-point shooter. Has a couple of them in this game. Penn State huddles for the final couple of minutes. Let's check out some other scores. Now final, Kentucky held off Vanderbilt. Low scoring game there. Iowa State with the lead in the second half. Texas, five points over Oklahoma in the second half of the game. And Kansas in control now against Texas A&M. Illinois leads Michigan State. Hmm. Interesting score. And look at that one. Wisconsin with a one-point lead on Purdue at Purdue. Mm -hmm. Purdue must have played a great game against Indiana. Yeah. Full court pressure, but they fade off quickly and drop back into the half-court area. 2:05 remaining in the game. Penn State leads by four, 66-62. Whoa! Wow. Oh, look no. at Jared Stevens. Oh, geez. He was standing by himself under the basket. Oh my goodness! Oh, and Penn State comes up dry. Oh. <laughs> you know when you're when you're struggling, you get scared as a coach that your guys will find ways to lose games. Javon Johnson can't get it to go. It's out of bounds. It's Penn State ball. That would have been Northwestern ball, but Johnson caught it as he was standing yeah, out of bounds. Yeah. Evan Eschmar had a good opportunity for a stick back there. Just couldn't get the handle. Penn State has the ball with 135 remaining. Well, they dodged a huge court earlier in that possession. Calvin Booth fouled by Eschmeyer. And Calvin will go to the line for the Nittany Lions. There's Jerry Dunn. Telling everybody to settle down, settle down. Take care of the ball, play solid defense, don't give up second shots, make your foul shots. Ricky Bird's on, open that his guys can pop another couple threes here late. Five blocks in the game, now the lead. Hmm. Couldn't get the double figure scoring on that one though, but he'll have another chance. Four 
four-point lead for the Nittany Lions. Calvin Bruce will try to make it five right here. Got it. Yvonne Johnson runs it up for Northwestern. Down to a minute 20 remaining in the game. Joe Brandt. Yeah, here is the dilemma. Yeah, where's your three-point right. shooter? That's right. Well defended. Penn State did a good job defending the look they tried to get. Oh! Boy. Wow. Javon Johnson with another three. That time the defense did a great job initially and then broke down after Northwestern's offense broke down. Well, this one is tight. Two-point lead, Penn State. You're watching Big Ten Basketball at Creative Sports. It's their turf. It's their world. It's their game. And when we don't play by their rules, the results can be deadly. From the creator of the award-winning television series Wild America comes a home video unlike anything you've ever seen. These are nature's dangerous encounters, captured in one of the most astonishing wildlife films ever made, and available now for the first time as a special one-hour home video. Call this toll-free number now to get Dangerous Encounters for just $19.95. It is not available in stores. Order now, and you'll also receive Watching Wildlife absolutely free. That's right. Both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $19.95. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-345-9500. That's 1-800-345-9500. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. 106 left. It's a two-point game. Ricky Birdsong plotting strategy. And here's how Northwestern got to within the two-point spread. Well, they tried to run a set for a three-point play. It didn't work out. And then they swung the ball, and Javon Johnson decided to take it on his own. And Penn State broke down, left him wide open. And the Northwestern bench up after that three-pointer. Javon Johnson's second three-pointer in the last couple of minutes. He's got 24 points in this game. What a game. Uh, he's done a terrific job. If you're Northwestern now, you got to just try to put a little pressure on Penn State, see if they'll cough it up, play solid, don't foul, make them take a tough shot, or hopefully get a turnover, come down and score. If you're Penn State, you want to get the ball in, you want to advance it up the floor, be solid with it, run the clock down, and run a good set, try to get a good look at the basket. Full court pressure. Jared Stevens inbounds the ball. Northwestern falls off, though. They really don't contest it they once that ball comes yeah, in. They haven't done any stunning or any trapping to cause Penn State problems with that pressure. Ryan Bailey with Joe Branch on him. Penn State was running the set right away that time. Now they're going to see if they try to go inside to Jeremy or Calvin. See if they can go to the foul line. Ten seconds on the shot clock now as Ryan Bailey takes it into the lane himself and forces the shot. It doesn't go, but oh, it's tipped in. Great tip by Jared Stevens. Oh, terrific man. offensive rebound. Thirty seconds remaining. Javon Johnson again, almost, but Eschmeyer goes up on his foul. Oh boy. What a stick back by Jared Stevens. That was amazing. Terrific play. Javon Johnson, who already has a career high, almost got another three. I'll tell you, that was a great individual effort by Evan Eschmeyer that time. He rolled around Jeremy Metzger and got good position. Here, Jared Stevens sneaks in underneath, uses oh. his left hand. Terrific play. Jared Stevens with a play of the game. He's got a dozen points in this one now for the Penn State Nittany Lions. And those two probably as big as to the game. Mm -hmm. Eschmeyer about to get himself a career high. They've had a couple of those. Javon Johnson career high right. 24. And now Eschmeyer about to. He's got a career high now. 27 points. Well, let's see if they do some stunning off of their press now. They can't just try to deny and, and steal. They've got to do a little bit of trapping. Got to Nails put some heat on Penn State here. Full court pressure. Greg Stevenson gets it into Booth. They, they didn't even deny the pass back. No. Calvin Booth gets it up to Pete Lasicki. 20 seconds left in the game, and Lasicki is fouled. Wrong guy to foul. Yep. Good job kicking the ball ahead to get it in Peter's hands. Ammons draws the foul. Ricky Birdsong takes a seat and wipes the brow. 
Here's the foul. Well, here Pete exposes the ball and goes right between his legs to get it away from the trap. Pete Lasicki on the line for the Nittany Lions. 24. <laughs> 24 free throws in a row now for Pete Lasicki. Okay, watch Penn State this time defensively to switch all screens so as to not allow Northwestern an easy look at the basket. 25. And 24 points in this game for Pete Lasicki as well. Devon Johnson passes down low. Ammons up. Ooh. Won't go. No foul. And the bat out to Ryan Bailey. Stepped on the line. And Ryan Bailey should have just pulled the ball out and run the clock down that time. Now four points lead for Penn State with 3.6 seconds remaining. Ricky Birdsong wants a timeout. So he'll talk to his guys about how you handle this. 3.6 seconds left, four points down. What do you try to do here, Bruce? The only, if you're Ricky, the only thing you can do is try to go for the interception and get it down and shoot a three. Hope you get fouled. Or you can take it right to the rack, try to press, and hope for a steal. If you're Penn State, do you even contest anything here? To just no. let them go, to, go down the court and score? Yep, just let them go down. All right. Jerry Dunn trying to put the wraps on the Penn State opening win of the Big Ten season. There's Evan Eschmeyer. What an effort. What a night tonight for the big guy for Northwestern. Northwestern's got to get the ball up, try to get a three. Carvel Ammons will throw it in. He almost hit the big scoreboard up there. Here's Eschmeyer. He'll get the easy layup. 1.2 right, seconds. That's a great job by Northwestern. Get it right to the rack. Now they still have a chance to get a steal and score. Stranger things have happened. Boy, you know, Carvel Ammons threw such a high, well, he threw such a, a high nice arching pass. pass. Yep. That almost hit the scoreboard up there. It was a great pass. And here Penn State is playing man-to-man -man on everybody else. They don't want to give up a three. That's why there was no help down on Eschmeyer. Now they were willing to give up a two, but they sure didn't want to give up a three. 30 points on the night, Evan Eschmeyer. So he has scored 56 points in the last two games for Northwestern. 1.2 seconds left and a two-point lead for Penn State. And the final seconds will determine which of these teams will remain without a win in the Big Ten. If I was if I was Jerry Dunn, I think I'd be real tempted to just throw a long pass, uh, get your hands on the ball, run out the clock. Even yeah. if Northwestern intercepts, they'd have to go. They'd have to throw a Hail Mary even yeah. to come close to scoring. Where they take a chance is if they throw it in underneath the basket and all of a sudden somebody slips in there, Quick steals bucket. it, and kicks it up. All right. Well, Northwestern has their strategy plotted as the five are out on the floor. Javon Johnson, Julian Bonner, Joe Brandt, Carvel Ammons, and Evan Eschmeyer for Penn State. They're just breaking the huddle. Lasicki, Ryan Bailey, Jared Stevens, Greg Stevenson, Calvin Booth come out. Here we go. Greg Stevenson right. will throw the ball in. Look for Penn State to go long. Oh, the short. Like I said. <laughs> Good job. Lasicki calls a timeout, and we've got the buzzer. Now, do they call a timeout? No. No nope. time Game's left. Over. As the time has expired and Penn State has picked up its first win in the Big Ten for the 96-97 season as they hang on for a two-point victory over the Wildcats of Northwestern. 71 to 69. Pete Lasicki had another 20-plus point game for the Nittany Lions. Ricky Birdsong remains without a win in the Big Ten. So Penn State picks up the victory. Bruce, some quick final thoughts. Bill, I'll tell you, this, this Penn State team is better than their record. They're better than the way they've been playing. Uh, hopefully this game, I know Jerry feels that way, the players feel that way. Hopefully this game will get some confidence for them. All right, there's your final score as Penn State hangs on for the two-point win. And now for Bruce Parkhill, this is Bill Zimfer saying good evening, everyone, from Evanston, Illinois.